Hi, my name is Jason Nikoff, and I'm an associate professor at Tennessee State University. Today, I'm going to be talking uh, as part of the Soil Smart series. I'm going to be talking about web soil survey and how it can be used for a number of different uh, objectives, uh, and it all is based on the the soil data that comes from the NRCS. And so, basically, the first thing to start off with to get into web soil survey, you just have to type the name web soil survey into any sort of search engine and it should get you to this page and then all you have to do is click on the green button and it'll load up the uh, the program where you're going to be able to identify a, a specific location that you want to target and look at the soils in that area and so the first thing that you do um, is to identify that area that you want to look at and the easiest thing um, really, if, if you have an address, you can go to the address button and just type it in. So I'm going to go ahead and put in our um, school location. And then it's going to pull up uh, the site. Uh, this is the campus. And I'm going to back off a little bit uh, because I'm going to try to get a little bit more um, a little bit more rural area um, aside from this this urban um, and so here we go we'll look at uh, this area right outside of Nashville and the first thing you want to do is to identify the exact spot that you want to look at and to do that you can click on either one of these AOI buttons I generally just use the the rectangle and uh, I can just create a large area that I want to look at and then it'll it'll take a few seconds to uh, create that location and then once it does you'll you'll see it'll it'll come up on the screen and then you'll be able to play around with it to look at some of the data that's part of the web soil survey program and so what we do is you can see the the area defined here and what I can do after that is I can click on the tab up above the soil map tab and that's going to identify all of the different types of uh, soil series that are located in the area and so I'm going to I'm going to zoom on this zoom in on this a little bit um, so you can see those those uh, soil series are are defined here um, with these three letter um, or in some cases uh, there's some numbers attached to them as well but on the left hand column you're going to see a description of each of these so if I pull one out this BE for instance that relates to a, a Beeson a soil series it's a silty clay loam occasionally flooded and so that gives you a little bit of information, but if you want more, you can click on it and it'll give you some more information about that Beeson uh, series. Uh, it'll give you an information about the top layer of soil. Uh, this is the first horizon, zero to six inches. You're gonna see a silty clay loam. And then as you move down within the profile, you're going to gain more clay. It'll become a silty clay. Um, there's also other information related to uh, the slope, the depth to restrictive features, um, any sort of a drainage class, uh, the effects of uh, or the potential to, to flood or, or have ponding. And so that's also some other information that could be useful depending upon what you're doing, whether you're um, trying to locate, you know, some place that you're going to, maybe you're going to buy a farm or you're going to buy some land and you want to identify, you know, how good that land is, whether you're building a house or whether you're using it for, for farming or, or some kind of uh, agricultural pursuit. This uh, web soil survey can help out with a, a number of different things. So you can look at, like I said, you can look at all of these different um, soil series depending upon the location um, what you're interested in uh, one other uh, feature is this soil data Explorer and if you click on that tab there's a number of different items that you can look at so you know obviously if you're looking at it for farming you know maybe vegetative pro productivity would be important to you and 
under that, you can see there's a number of different things. There's uh, row crops, there's forests, there's, uh, you know, pasture and range systems. So you can look at the potential for, for each one of those. So if I click on corn and I hit this view rating button, it's going to show me those areas that are identified as being the best or the worst for growing corn. And so, uh, you know, the map, is is nicely colored now so essentially the the greener areas are going to be better for that corn production uh, the redder areas are are not going to be very good and you can also see an indication of, of why and so let's say let's pick this hsf series and we'll look down below and we'll look up hsf so this is this hawthorne sulfura sulfura association and it'll tell me um you know, it's got, it's got some low inherent productivity. And so that's, uh, that's essentially, you know, a low spot for, for, for productivity. Some of these other soil series are going to be higher. So here's this Arrington silt loam that's going to be uh, a little bit better. And then, um, so you can see, you know, that, that gives a very good picture of, you know, what things look like and, and how they're going to be classified. Um, like I said before, there's, there's a number of different, uh, different things. A, a lot of these things are used in any sort of a, a city planning or land use type planning. Uh, also, you know, if you're looking at a particular area that you're thinking of building a house, um, you can identify, you know, is it going to work with, you know, a basement? And so you can click on that and uh, view the rating. And then it'll also give you, you know, the same kind of color coding. Um, in this case, again, you know, we've got this area, you know, has some, some slope to it. And so there's going to be some issues with that. Um, we've got some small areas here that are, that are relatively good for, for building a house with a basement. But most of the, the, the areas within this area of interest are not going to be good. So again, we can look if we if we choose this HSF again. If we look at this, it'll it'll explain a little bit more. Um, and you can see again, it's very limited. But over here, it tells you uh, essentially the slope is the biggest issue. Um, you're not going to want to have a uh, a house with a basement due to the slope. Um, also, another another important one is the depth to hard bedrock. Um, that's going to be another issue in those areas. Um, you know, a lesser of lesser issue is this depth to soft bedrock. Uh, but you can see if there's, you know, if there's any sort of issues, for instance, this one here has an issue with flooding. So obviously, you know, if you build a basement, you don't want that, that flooding to occur. And so, you know, it's good. It tells you not just, um, where those areas, you know, of issue are, but it also tells you uh, why there are issues there. And so um, this is a good tool to use based on soils data that's been mapped all throughout the U.S. and it can help to uh, provide, you know, some information so that folks can make decisions on any sort of land use that you're going to do, whether it's for agriculture or um, home building or, or whatever. It's, it's got some good information on there. So um, if there are any uh, questions, um, this basically wraps up the, the overall tutorial on web soil survey and some of the different factors that are involved. If you've got any questions, uh, please feel free to, to contact me. My email is jdecoff at tnstate.edu and my Twitter handle is at TSU Bioenergy and I'd be happy to answer any questions, but uh, thank you for uh, taking part, and uh, we hope that you'll participate in, in future Soul Survey series uh, presentations. Thanks.